Hello and welcome to what is uh, the last episode of Project Eden, or at least the last formal episode of Project Eden. I've done a lot of work since the last episode, and uh, the reason that I kind of took this big jump is I want to get finished with the series and move on to other projects. And there's also some other reasons I can get back to a bit later. Um, so it's pretty much finished, and I think it works, will work. I, I haven't really placed it, tested it yet, yet but I have sealed off all the exits. So the main idea with this is uh, that this builds, build or this, this part of the base that is walled in around here uh, should be completely self-sufficient. So everything around here is absolute tiles, like both the insulated tiles and the non-insulated. Everything is absolute. There's no gas inflow. There's no power inflow to this, this part. You see here it's cut off. So uh, this is powered from my main base that I used to build everything up here, uh, but everything inside is self-powered. Um, and it should be completely automated as well, so it should be hands-off, or at least that's the idea. Now, there might be some small tuning that I need to do. I also see that there's still like a bit of ice that haven't melted yet, so I will probably have to mop that up over time as well, uh, or at least sweep it. Um, but, uh, all in all, it should be pretty much done. Um, so, first of all, uh, some of the machines here are made YouTube videos about how they work. Uh, some other, there's some really good discussion threads on the Clay Forum. So what I will do is I will post in the video description uh, links to the relevant threads on the Clay Forum, link to uh, the, the forum post I will make where I post this video, where there will also be the save file of the video, so you can actually go in and check how everything works yourself, or even play test it to see if I actually succeeded or not. Um, that, um, a, a fair warning though, uh, this uh, base is kind of ridiculous because it's not only this, this huge thing up here, it's also the main base down here that I, I used when I built everything up here before I sealed it off, which means it got pretty crazy loading time. We're talking several minutes and I have a solid state disk. And if you don't have a quite good computer, it will probably lag as well. But it's there if you wanna check it out, check out all the different layers, etc. cetera. Um, some of the machines here are, are uh, kind of not exactly my own invention. Most, most are, are out there, it's just maybe I have adapted it a bit differently how I use them. Uh, for example, the cooling system here, I, I posted um, a thread uh, on, on the clay forum with uh, how you could use, um, uh, how liquid works in, in oxygen not included to get cooling out of power. Of course, I wasn't the first one to think about it and, and the machine I made to do it wasn't as expected as um, I immediately got a reply from a guy named Saturnus on the clay forum who seems to pretty much I, I've seen so many posts of him and he seems to know everything there is to know about oxygen included which who of course immediately posted a more efficient version uh, that he I guess made a long time back so I'm for this base I'm actually using something really close to the build he suggested because you pretty much get a lot more cooling out of it. If you want to check more about that, it's probably easier to just read in that thread than, than me explaining in this video as well. That would, this video would probably be quite long anyway. Um, so uh, if we start with the reasons that I, I kind of want to wrap this project up, um, it's mainly because this build relies on two somewhat big exploits of how uh, some systems are currently working in oxygen not included. The first one is the cooling that relies on how liquid is handled in, in, in the game right now. Liquid, regardless if you have a gram or a full like 10 kilos, it will still cool the same way and take up full space, etc. right? Which means if you can exploit that, that a gram of liquid will cool just as a full, full, uh, 10, ki uh, 10 kilos um, uh, to, to, to create uh, a lot of cold. And that might not work in the future, who knows. Uh, the second kind of big exploit is the liquid tepidizer and how it works when it's partly covered by liquid and partly not, that it heats, it can be really, really warm in one end 
and kind of still not overheat because it's cold in the other end. So for example here, the gas around it is like uh, sitting at 1300 degrees. It's going up and down as it turns off and on, but it's really high temperatures. But the liquid tepidizer stays at a steady like 50 to 50 degrees Celsius because uh, the crude oil here is only 36 degrees Celsius. And that's also kind of exploity, so that might not work in the future. Um, so since there's a patch coming in a few weeks, who knows if this build will even work after that. I kind of wanted to, to see if it worked before that, but also give people a chance to kind of play test it if they want and check it out before it might not work. Um, uh, the second reason is of course the long load times make it kind of a hassle to actually play on this map now because it takes so long for me to load the save files. Um, and I'm also running out of materials. I mean, this is not exactly what's left for me, but pretty much. I mined out most of the precious metals on in this asteroid. It's a kind of small pockets here and there as could still clean out. But like all the mayor, uh, mayor pockets of, 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 of metals, I'm kind of used up. So there's there's kind of a limit how much more stuff I can actually build or, or do here. So, I, so that's also a reason I kind of want to move on to something else. Uh, let's see, I actually made a, like, a little paper with stuff I need to remember uh, because there's so much things I need to talk about so I don't forget anything. Um, this, uh, since I haven't really play tested it after closing it off, there might need some, some minor tuning, like I said, some mopping up. I also think thought they could kind of use the time in here while I, I tune the machines to clean up some debris from constructing it that I haven't cleaned up yet. Um, so they have some construction materials also from, from some of the cleanup I've done. Uh, but because they, they won't have that much to do in here, so they can use, use the time I need to play test to, uh, to, to do some cleanup job. Um, also, most of the machine I'm pretty confident are kind of tuned because they've been a lot of them have been running for several hundred cycles. The first one I put up, so it's more the, the things I added later on that, 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 that might need some small tuning, especially for example, the cooling of the base. I'm not sure like how the temperatures will pan out in the end, but this cooling machine got a lot more to give. So it's just a matter of like how, how cold I set the liquid to be in here. So it's not really a problem if, if it can be done, more a problem of tuning. Um, so uh, let's see, I have to check my little uh, note paper. Um, yeah, I think I got all the mayor parts there. So let's start talking about how this works. Okay, so. First of all, the morbs here, they produce polluted oxygen. Uh, and also the mealwood here, uh, since they can't really enter here and it's locked, they produced, um, well, they rot and then turn to polluted dirt that produce even more polluted oxygen. Now, in reality, for, for the three duplicates living in here, I should only need 20 morbs. I had 20 morbs to start with and it wasn't enough uh, oxygen production or polluted oxygen produ production. Uh, so. And I think the reason is when it is this tightly packed that it kind of creates small pockets of higher concentration of polluted oxygen that prevents them from, from spawning more polluted oxygen because they won't spawn any polluted oxygen if the pressure is too high. So if you've got small pockets of higher pressure, that, that might prevent them from doing so. So I chose the easy solution of just cramming more of them in there. Uh, and I think uh, there, there is a way to, to make them really produce a lot of polluted oxygen. You can like seal them in to fanatic doors or, or, or airflow tiles. But I'm already using kind of two mayor exploits and I didn't want to add one more if I didn't really need to. So this works. I produce enough polluted oxygen even more than I need. So any excess polluted oxygen is actually pumped, will be pumped out through this, this, this little valve here uh, that only goes active if the pressure is about 750 and over to um, my puffs over here that produce slime uh, that they can use for a little mushroom farm here. Uh, now they don't really need this food to survive. They have enough sleep with grains. I'm gonna get, come back to this farm later, but they don't really need this, 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 this farm to survive. It's more like a neat way to take care of the polluted oxygen. I didn't really need to do it since this room is kind of self-regulating. Since if it's too high polluted oxygen pressure, the morbs will just stop uh, producing polluted oxygen, so it's, it's self-regulating in that way, right? So the polluted oxygen is transported over here where it's cooled down uh, by a hydrogen bubble where the really cold hydrogen that's processed through here, uh, liquefy it and put out some really, really cold uh, polluted, uh, no, clean air or clean oxygen output. 
uh, it's let's see I get a little bit lag at night and day shifts uh, there we go so the clean oxygen is pumped out here where I run through some oil it provides some extra cooling of my oil system that cools down stuff uh, but also heats up the, the oxygen a bit so it will be nice temperatures once I put, put it out or nice uh, temperate temperatures when I put it out in the rest of the base um, I have some uh, here is all absolute tiles this is everything here is absolute it's just that I kind of thought it looked nice except for these ones that are sandstone so a lot of the cold produced in here leaks down here so I can get really nice low temperatures down in this part this fluctuates a bit you see it gets a bit warmer over here because I pumped the liquid in from this like the the warmer uh, polluted water in from this side uh, so that's also the reason I have more sleet wheat here than I actually need because they they will kind of these ones will shut off and this one will turn on and by having if if, if it's too warm here uh, also uh, by having a bit more than they have water for uh, you will make sure no water is stored in here because if water hot water is stored in here that will raise the temperature and maybe make this this fail right this farm so I want to keep a minimum of water I pump in here so it's good to have like a few excess um, farms here to kind of make sure to drain out the pipes completely so this is where they're gonna get the main amount of food and then they're gonna get a little bit more food from here so uh, once this is done uh, we can move on to to the power plant and the power plant is over here and I described that pretty well in a video uh, a bit a little while ago um, so I won't go into that few, if, uh, further, but pretty much oil is, is boiled to natural gas that is pumped over here. Um, these ones produce all, a lot of polluted water, and that's the water I use to make clean water. Uh, so uh, any excess polluted water would be taken care of by the timber reeds because I'm actually producing more water than I need. So any excess polluted water, uh, this is kind of... I know there's better solutions you can make. This is kind of a, just an easy way to take care of it. So you see they, they lack irrigation now because if the polluted water level here gets too high, they, they, these will get uh, uh, the liquid flow to, to, to my, my, my timber reed will get turned on and, and they will kind of suck it up. Uh, a neat way I could have done is pretty much pump polluted water up to some area where it could kind of steam off and slowly convert to polluted oxygen that I could also have used. So that would be an alternative way to do it. But this one is kind of compact and, and kind of easy. So I made it easy for myself there. Uh, any excess carbon dioxide, uh, because uh, the slicksters won't actually need as much carbon dioxide as they can produce natural gas for for. Uh, natural gas generators they, they, these generators that this machine can provide uh, natural gas for will output more uh, um, carbon dioxide than actually needed so you will have like an I, either too much oil or too much carbon dioxide so what I do is I just clean up any excess carbon dioxide down here um, and the polluted water is converted to clean water here partly and any excess need of clean water is converted here from polluted water to clean water in this boiler. This is the cooling machine that I talked about. So I have a big cooling loop of oil here. The oil is set up to some logical circuits. So most of it is just a, like a, a clean loop just around the base without actually circulating anywhere, except if the temperatures is above what I want. So for example, every, let's see here, all of these pipes you see here, there's a liquid shut off to different ones and pretty much depending on the temperature uh, in this area, in this case in the oil here, uh, it will either just pass by without even going up here or go up here. So I keep it at a, uh, at a steady temperature. Same of course with the cooling unit here, it will shut off when I have the desired temperature in the oil. So now we covered energy production, water production, food production down here. Um, other than that I have some batteries and the reason for the batteries is pretty much that um, I'm actually running periodically but just periodically a bit above what I'm producing but a lot of times a bit lower so it's kind of I'm using most of the energy I'm producing I didn't think I would but I'm actually I actually am uh, 
especially when this machine is on uh, because these will only turn on and off periodically so that's why I have a few batteries to even it out I have the uh, living areas up here with a massage bench I have some electric grills one for uh, mushrooms and one for um, uh, well the, the, the what, what are they called like frost buns yeah frost buns I got their med area that I don't think really they will use um, oh this one is actually placed in a too hot area let's see yeah I probably can't have this flower here so let's just delete that one um, and over here I have something that I call my exercise area the priorities for this one is set to one these one together consume exactly as much power as as this one use it's pretty much if they go idle I thought it could be fun for them to have somewhere to be and do something so pretty much if they have nothing to do the idea I don't know if it will work but the idea is they will go here and kind of sit there and pedal until they got something more important to do again uh, so I call it their exercise room uh, let's see if there's something else I need to cover um, temperature is set um, yeah the reason for this room is also just to even out like the, the gas production I also produce my fertilizer here for my sleep wheat farm uh, but I think this is pretty much it uh, this should be self-sufficient uh, I have a lot of automation systems and it's pretty much to turn machines on and off um, depending on conditions uh, so so it will kind of handle itself if I have too much polluted water this will happen if I have too little clear water this will happen if the temperature is too high somewhere this will happen etc right and some of the automation is just a neat way to turn off and on machines by by hand I will never really touch those buttons uh, I did it while starting everything up but now I shouldn't really need to um, yeah I, th I think I kind of got everything set here uh, so just post in the comments if you want a more detailed explanation of something this will actually I thought from the beginning by the way that I would have need for do to enter but the meal would actually after a certain time even if it's finished I didn't know that uh, actually seems to regrow and drop the fruits even if you don't harvest it but in case I need to harvest the meal wood without taking it out there's a neat way to do it I just put permissions on the door and I set the job descriptions so that the guy who can enter can't really um, carry anything with him he just harvest but it's not allowed to deliver and that way I can make him harvest it and not deliver but I don't think I will need to um, yeah that's that's pretty much it thank you for watching and check out all the descriptions in the YouTube video if you want to know uh, more detailed explanation of the stuff and also like I said the save file is there if you want to check it out I think I'm succeeded, but I, I'll leave you guys to be the judge of that. Uh, Self-sustaining base, no inflow of nothing, no wastewoods, no geysers, nothing. Uh, Alright, cheers!